So, ultimately, where this is all going is that we can start to identify that the mind is a form of possession unless we don't have control of it. And if you look around the world these days, you can see how many really, how many people really have control of their mind. If we don't have control of our mind, we don't have control of our actions. <laughs> and if we don't have control of our actions, we don't have control of our reactions. We, we become beings of inversion because what's true to our nature is ultimately love and happiness and joy and positivity and devotion to all these vibrational um, states of being. When our minds start to seed, and look at children, for example. Look what happens once children start to go through their early ages of existence within this um, planet. Once goes from share, from love and positivity and joy is inverted to these toxic vibrations of anger, frustration, hatred, jealousy. You know, and what happens is that all what happens is we start to follow the thoughts of the mind. Now, I'm not saying that all thoughts of our minds are dark and negative, because if they were, we would wake up and we'd be like, no, don't listen to the mind. You don't, or you'll turn into a, into, into the devil. No, we, that doesn't happen, because the mind's very sophisticated. It, it can't just be ultimate blatant, blatant in the fact of, oh, you know, like, because it, it can't work like that because the mind is needs to be extremely sophisticated to keep us believing in its existence. If we didn't believe in the mind's existence, we wouldn't choose to be a part of it. And that's the divine truth of our existence is that the mind will always be a part of us because we're living in the human form, which is governed by the mind unless we choose to overthrow the government. And that's by activating the heart and choosing a different frequency um, to concentrate our awareness on a different frequency. When we activate the heart, when we bring the heart into activation, we can shift our awareness from the mind to the heart. It's so simple. But what isn't simple is fighting for this activation in the first place. To truly activate the heart, we must bring the vibrational truth within the heart. How we bring this vibrational truth is unique for everyone, yet it can be activated as long as we go in search of this activation. Once become activated, we can start to resonate with the heart's frequency. What this does is it starts to create the shift between the mind's perceptual um existence and the heart's perceptional existence what's very 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 fascinating is like they're two pools of information the heart's pure is pure it's its pool is is clean it's 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 existence within love this heart's pure the mind's information can be distorted to an extent of its of its existence the mind's existence is is created from a false imagination. This coding or this this existence has very much created our perception to be conquered and ruled. As long as we're living from our minds, we have the per perceptual um, ability to suffer. All I'm saying here is we don't need to go too crazy within the the truth of the mind and what it's designed to do, because can come across crazy to a lot of people but all i'm saying is that as long as we're living from our minds we have the potential to suffer for all of those who don't want to suffer we must overcome the mind and connect back to the heart the mind will always be a part of us and the mind's thoughts will always attempt to lure us back into its um to its existence because as long as we follow a thought of the mind we will become that existence within the mind's perception which isn't negative but we must ask ourselves and use our hearts to balance the truth within the mind's perception and the heart's existence we start to balance and start to become the the calculation of of justice do i feel that that thought 
We'll wrap it up into one more. 